people made history by electing Tim Scott, the first black senator from a southern state since Reconstruction, and Mia Love, the first Republican black woman elected to the House of Representatives. Now, sadly, instead of celebrating this historic progress, well, the NAACP released a statement which made no mention of Scott or Love. Rather, the statement read, quote, equal access to voting remains paramount as numerous reports of voting irregularities emerged during the midterm elections yesterday. Now, even the NAACP president, Cornell William Brooks, sought to downplay the newfound diversity in Congress with his own bizarre announcement, and that read, quote, this election was not about those who won, but rather the citizens who lost the right to participate. Here with reaction now is Fox News contributor, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Um, it's, if it's the National know. Association for the Advancement of Colored People, and you have historic elections here, why do they resist? Is, do you have to be liberal to be counted in that group? Yes, you do, Sean. It is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored Liberal Progressive People, and they need to redefine themselves as such. It is nothing more than an extension, just an arm of the Democrat Party. And the fact that they could not come out and just show good sportsmanship, if you want to put it that way, of congratulating Tim Scott and also congratulating Mia Love, that was not necessary. But their whole focus continues to be on the grievance mongering in the, uh, in the black you know, community. But it's I heard, even, it's, I heard the know, NAAC, they said nothing about those lynching flyers that were sent out by the North Democrat Carolina. Party. Yeah, or nothing mm -hmm. about the flyers that were used in, in Georgia. Tim yeah. Scott got an F grade from the NAACP. He, here's his explanation as to why he thinks he got that. If we look back over history, when the Congress was controlled by the Democrats for 40 consecutive years, if we look at the result of that control, what has happened in black America, we saw greater poverty. If we take the statistics from 1970s to the 21st century, what we see very clearly is that poverty has gone from 11% to 15%. These are classic examples that the policies of the left have not worked. I will tell you that if I have an F on the end, the in a AACP scorecard is because I believe that progress has to be made and the government is not the answer for progress. You know, last night we went to the Hannity Big Board with my friend Charles Payne and we showed, okay, the people that have suffered in this country the most under Obama's policies are black Americans, Hispanic Americans, women, the very constituencies that they say they have the most, uh, the monopoly on compassion for. So, how do they get to that grade? How do they make that assumption? Well, that assumption is just based upon whether or not you have a D or an R after your name. I've been there and done that, had to go through it. And it was the former chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, Representative Emanuel Cleaver from Kansas City, Missouri, who back in 2012 said that if there were someone different sitting in the White House, that black people would be marching on the White House. But yet, because of the president, who he is, they give deference to him. Sean, it's, it's pathetic what you have seen happen since 1965 and the great society programs of Lyndon Johnson, the decimation of the black family, the decimation of the inner city, the, the lack of jobs and opportunity, poor education. There in New York City, where was the NAACP when Mayor Bill de Blasio wanted to shut down the charter schools? One of the most high performing is Success Academy right there in Harlem. So we know whose side they're playing on. And uh, Tim Scott, myself, and many others, Mia Love, we uh, really are not concerned about the ratings of the NAACP. Let me ask you about the president. If you go back to the president, um, he made this comment back in September, no more boots on the ground in Iraq dealing with ISIS. Remember when he said this? I will not commit you and the rest of our armed forces to fighting another ground war in Iraq. After a decade, of massive ground deployments. It is more effective to use our unique capabilities in support of partners on the ground so they can secure their own country's futures. And that's the only solution that will succeed over the long term. Now the president waits till after the election, 15 more hundred boots on the ground, and we find out that he has his little secret pen pal, the supreme leader of Iran, in, in terms of reaching out to them to deal with ISIS. What is your reaction to these two developments? Well, I find it quite uh, hypocritical that the president would put boots on the ground uh, of our U.S. troops in West Africa to fight against Ebola, but not fight against an enemy that has beheaded Americans. Look, Sean, it's very simple. The president made campaign promises, and that overweighed 
policy. And he created a vacuum in Iraq, and now he does not want to go and commit our troops to clean up the failure in, in his foreign policy. And one of the things that has happened is that Iran has come in to fill that void, ISIS has come in to fill that void, and the President of the United States of America is now sending letters to the number one state sponsor of Islamic terrorism in the entire world. And that is unconscionable that the Commander-in-Chief, the President of the United States of America, will be having these secret correspondences with a declared enemy of the United States of America since they took our hostages back in 1979. Unbelievable. Let me ask you one related question. Ten years ago, um, of all the people that were crossing into this country illegally, less than 10 percent were from countries other than Mexico. There's a report out mm -hmm. today that from the Center for Investigative Reporting, 53 percent now of illegals or 253,000 people caught at the U.S.-Mexico US border are from countries other than Mexico. What, mm -hmm. what, how alarming is that in your mind? Because sirens are running off in mind thinking, all right, Yemen, yeah. Syria, Afghanistan, Pakistan, maybe yeah. Iran. How dangerous is that? It's incredibly dangerous because on this new 21st century battlefield where you have these non-state, non-uniform belligerents that are transiting irrespective of borders, why would we not want to secure our own border, protect our own sovereignty and the people of the United States of America? So once again, we're creating a gap by which this enemy is going to exploit us, establish terrorist cells in this country. We know that ISIS is calling for these lone wolf jihadist attacks. You know, border security is first and foremost all about your national security. And we see a president that for whatever reason uh, prefers an open border, open door policy instead of really protecting this great nation. All right, Colonel West, good to see you. Thank you. And coming Thank up you. next tonight here on Hannity.